What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Volvo S60, courtesy of Younger Volvo in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because this is a very good looking sedan, at least in my personal opinion. Not only that, there are new trim levels for the 2023 model year and some new themes as well. And we'll, of course, get into that in a little bit here but you also get a four-year 50,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty which is of course more than the traditional three-year 36,000 mile warranty so big fan of that but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so let's first start with those new trim levels here. There is going to be the core, which is the one we are in today, starting at $42,395, which actually is a $3,145 price bump from the 2022 model year, in case you were curious. Plus, which is going to start at $45,095. And lastly, the ultimate trim level starting at $47,845. And by the way, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration, which actually is what we have today, but you can add all wheel drive. If you wanted to do that, simply add $2,300 then to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the S60 is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder with a mild hybrid system as well, putting out 247 horsepower at 5,400 RPM, 258 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic. When it comes to that zero to 60 time, it's gonna differ slightly depending upon whether you go with the front wheel drive or all wheel drive front wheel drive puts you at 6.4 seconds all wheel drive then puts you at 6.2 with mpg numbers coming in at 26 in the city 35 on the highway for the front wheel drive 25 city 33 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel anyways now have you got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 s60 here up to speed. All right, little bit of a rolling start, but kick it, baby. <laughs> it's not bad. I like it. Zero to 60 is 6.4, you guys. That ain't that bad. 100% not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. That's a good bet. You know what's even better? There wasn't any spinning there. A lot of times with front wheel drive configurations, sending a decent amount of power to just the front wheels, you get a little bit of spinning. Now, good thing is about the S60 is if that were to happen, you know, you got the all wheel drive system. So you don't have to get the front wheel drive like we have today. But again, having said that, there wasn't any spinning anyway. So I will say though, if you live in Western Maryland, like we do, like I do, or like I'm currently driving right now, I should say I actually live in PA, but all wheel drive is gonna benefit you when it comes to snow, of course. But having said that again, acceleration with the front wheel drive actually surprised me because there was no spinning but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 11.8 inch ventilated front disc in the back 11.9 inch solid rear disc so as a 60 zero stopping distance goes it's going to come in an extremely impressive 114 feet and since there's nobody behind me it's wonderful 100% on the firm side of things instantly brings you to a stop. It definitely gives you a lot of driver confidence when it comes to that braking feel because I can't tell you guys how many times I've driven vehicles that have such soft braking feels and it feels like you really got to stop on it to come to a stop. That's not the case here in the S60. So that's a brilliant thing without a doubt. Tons of confidence here with the braking feel on this thing. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a devil wishbone type front suspension. In the back, integral link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, as I am cru cruising over some extremely smooth roads here in Eggerstown, it's 100% on point as expected. This is a Volvo, so you really shouldn't have any issues there. Touching on cabin noise, I'm going 50 miles per hour right now. I'll let you guys be the judge of that, honestly. It isn't all that bad. I'm not getting a whole lot of road noise or wind noise or anything like that. So personally, I wouldn't have any issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it's weighted beautifully. So it's not a loose steering feel. I can tell you that it's not really the heaviest steering feel either, 
but it leans towards the heavier side of things from what I'm typically used to driving. So I love the steering feel actually in the X60. I'm definitely not gonna have any issues there. Touching on visibility, rear visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine. Typically in a sedan of this shape, you're not gonna have any issues there. Another thing though when it comes to forward visibility is for that ultimate trim level, you actually also get a head up display. Now we don't have it today, but essentially what that is going to do is project your speed, speed limit and safety features up on your windshield. So it better helps you keep your eyes on the road. And again, that's gonna assist with forward visibility there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Volvo S60 because the changes continue. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Volvo S60 finished in Silver Dawn Metallic. In case you were curious of our exterior color name kind of matches the sky today but anyways as always let's go ahead and start up front because that kind of uh introduces us to what is new for the 2023 model year for example the themes that i mentioned at the beginning of the video essentially you get to choose between two themes there's no extra cost for either theme you get either a bright or a dark theme so you get to choose that that's new for 2023 we obviously have the dark theme how can you tell well simply by looking at the front grille so this front grille is going to be highlighted in a chrome finish if you were to go with the bright theme. However, if you were to go with the dark like we have today, everything is gonna be finished in gloss black. And those gloss black accents are gonna continue basically throughout the vehicle, including those side mirrors actually as well. But we'll get to those in a second, but otherwise they're gonna be body colored. But bright theme basically gives you chrome and body colored accents. Dark theme gives you the gloss black accents throughout. So do wanna start by mentioning that, but also, to the sides there, LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. You get the LED Thor's Hammer daytime running lights as well, as Volvo is now known for, of course. Automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But you also get automatic high beams coming standard across the board. So, essentially when your high beams are on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams. So, kind of a convenience feature there. Then if you were to look just below those headlights, you are going to find LED fog lights coming standard with the cornering function as well, which you hardly ever see these days, even on luxury manufacturers. So essentially when you're going around a bend at night, those fog lights are going to swivel, kind of better help uh, illuminating what is around the bends. You're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a cyclist or whatever the case. So that is pretty darn cool as well, but very Volvo-ish looking front end, which I personally love. I think it looks great up front, but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of the S60, again, gloss black or chrome window surrounds to start body colored or gloss black side mirrors like I was just mentioning. By the way, when it comes to those side mirrors, they are power adjustable, they are heated with LED integrated turn signals for all trim levels. So I do wanna mention that as well. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch diamond cut alloys for the core and plus trim levels, then 19 inch triple five spoke diamond cut alloys then for the ultimate. But again, very nice side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top, regardless of which theme you go with, still gonna be body colored up there. You got the Volvo lettering spelled out horizontally. That always looks good. You do have LED C-shaped taillights coming standard. Absolutely 100% love that. And if you go down all the way to the bottom here, I remember in the past, these were kind of, uh, exhaust was integrated actually into that rear bumper. So that is the slightly different look in the back there. And uh, I actually prefer last year's look with the exhaust integrating into the bumper because I remember it being dual exhaust outlets with quad tips. It looked dang aggressive. But now if I get down low enough, you will actually get dual exhaust outlets, but they are actually tucked away, kind of hidden from sight. So. I don't know. I don't like that look as much. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section below. But as always, I think you guys know what we have to do next. Here is that exhaust clip. All 
right, so now since we are around to the back of the S60, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there's several different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob, of course. There is a button on the trunk itself. There's a button by the driver's side left knee from the driving position, but then there is an optional hands-free trunk as well, where you simply just kick your foot underneath of that bottom of the back end there, it's gonna automatically open up for you. So that is pretty darn cool as well. But anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 11.6 cubic feet. There are two cargo lights back there. There's a couple grocery bag hooks. There's a spare tire then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor. And of course you could probably put an ice scraper within that spare tire area as well but overall trunk was plenty fine then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 35.2 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the rear seats there rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard you got your rear ventilation that also comes standard for those rear passengers but the interesting thing about the rear ventilation is it's not actually found in that center area where you typically find it on other sedans but rather kind of just in front of those rear doors on both sides actually so you have two vents one for each rear passenger in the back the center passengers left out of course but still you get two rear air vents where you typically find kind of uh, both of them found in the center so that's a little bit different of a setup so i wanted to kind of emphasize that rear dual charging ports you can find back there as well there is a tiny bit of storage just above that and you can actually get heated rear seats they are optional they don't come standard but i did want to mention it then make our way to the front seats power adjustable front seats do come standard for all trim levels with two-way power lumbar as well four-way power lumbar then coming with the ultimate trim level there is a power cushion extension for the ultimate trim level and then memory settings for the ultimate trim level as well and that's for up to two different drivers here so that's pretty cool leather seating is going to come standard and then heated and ventilated front seats are going to be available overall when it comes to seat comfort it's okay uh it's not good there's some awkward pressure points but it's really not that bad so i didn't mind it other cool thing that i absolutely love about all volvos is they do put the flag of sweden on the passenger seat here every single vehicle that they make so that's one of the best parts about this thing. But anyways, to take a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping is manually adjustable. It is leather wrapped as well. 10 and two grips are definitely on the thicker side. Nice little places to put your thumb as well, which I don't typically find on really any of the other vehicles that I drive. So 100% loving the grips in this steering wheel. It makes you better feel like you're in control. So big fan of that. Then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Volvo logo on the one side. Essentially though, all of your buttons are located on the side of the key. And so key number one is going to be black key number two is going to be orange by the way i think i showed that in last year's review but lock unlock the button to pop the rear trunk there but it is all keyless entry with a turn knob start that's a little bit different than just about all other vehicles that aren't volvo so you just simply put your foot on the brake and turn the knob to the right to start it and then you turn the knob to the right to stop it as well you don't turn anything to the left just to the right but anyways once started up when it comes to those gauges they are amazing it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster kind of powered by google so you got google maps front and center you got your speedometer all the way to your left with a digital speedometer within that you got your tachometer on your right then there is speed limit recognition up there there's how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your outside temperature really everything you could possibly want up there and again the va my favorite part at least is the google maps sandwiched right in the middle of it all so that is wonderful i love the gauges on the volvo s60 without a doubt but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a dual pane panoramic moonroof comes standard on every trim level i love that that's so stinky cool you usually don't find that coming standard for even the base trim level or the core trim level that we have here dual zone climate control coming standard four zone climate control coming with the ultimate ultimate is also going to add linear lime accents which is kind of like a wood look tailored dashboard coming with the ultimate as well i like the kind of silver texturized accents though i got to be honest just about the passenger side glove box i like that it's not just a basic silver but it is texturized which is cool I like that. Don't see a wireless phone charger on our core trim level that we have here today. So I did want to just mention that, but overall, when it comes to interior quality, it's perfectly fine. Another thing, I like this little clip here found kind of on the front windshield to kind of put like little tickets when you're on like the Pennsylvania Turnpike or uh, Bay Bridge or something like that. So I'm a big fan of that. There is an electromechanical parking brake just behind that engine start button. You got a couple cup holders. There's a 12 volt power outlet, a little bit of rubberized storage just in front of that within the center armrest. It's a decent amount of 
storage. Nah, I wouldn't say decent. It's a little bit on a smaller side, but there's a couple more charging ports within that as well. So that's kind of cool, but everything is very minimalist. You only have like seven or eight buttons maybe just in front of the shifter. You do have a little bit of plastic just in front of that shifter. Matte black plastic wouldn't mind it if they kind of finish that with like a gloss black finish or some kind of a design of some sort. But do you like the frameless rear view mirror? That is pretty darn cool. So overall, I don't have any issues with the interior quality. I think it's perfectly fine. But then taking a look at the infotainment screen, because it definitely gets good here. Nine inch tablet style color touchscreen display for all trim levels, Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You can adjust your climate control settings up there. Get your heated seat buttons up there as well. You can adjust your drive modes up there. There's also weather information as well and your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems on the S60, there's, there's several of them. You got a 10 speaker hi-fi sound system that comes standard with the core and the plus trims but then for the ultimate you got a 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 600 watts and then for $3,200 you can also get a 15 speaker Bowers and Wilkins sound system which is my favorite sound system in existence at least on the S90 out of all the 700 plus cars that I've tested that is my favorite sound system so far but this particular one the S60 comes with 1100 watts as well but as I said, we actually do have the 10 speaker hi-fi sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? As always, let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. It's okay. It's okay. I, honestly, for 10 speakers, it's not bad. Harman Kardon and Bowers and Wilkins are going to blow that out of the water for sure. But it's an okay sound system. Honestly, me, I would have wanted a little bit better. Uh, just because this is an X60, it's a little more expensive car, but it'll get the job done. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, the last thing I'm going to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. And then if you were to go with the ultimate, you're also going to get a 360 degree monitor giving you that bird's eye view, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That so pretty much says it all right there. Front side side current airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but then also coming standard, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, collision avoidance assist with pedestrian and cyclist and large animal detection, lane departure warning, lane keep assist automatic emergency braking and runoff road mitigation then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts honestly i could say the safety because the safety is brilliant this is a volvo that's what volvo's are known for it's got that perfect safety rating by ihs but really what impressed me the most about the s60 what really surprised me because i don't remember this from last year the driving dynamics are incredible Honestly, incredible acceleration for this thing. It's perfectly fine for me. Excellent braking, 60 to 0 and 114 feet is wonderful. It doesn't get a whole heck of a lot better than that. You typically find that number in the 120s for a sedan. So 114 is sports sedan good without a doubt. Steering feels wonderful as well. So the driving dynamics really put a smile on my face. I got to be honest, I loved driving the S60. So I love that. I can't say that about all Volvos, but for the S60, it is wonderful. Great design as well. I told you guys that when I was touching on the exterior. I love the digital gauges. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Ambient lighting would be nice. That's one of my constructive criticisms. I wouldn't mind seeing some ambient lighting in this thing. I think that would look dang good. And where's the wireless phone charger here? That's what I'm looking for. Where's the wireless phone charger on the S60? But anyways, that about rounds out this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel, after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.